Okay then gang, so at the moment, when we load the homepage in the browser, the cards show up pretty much instantly. And that's because it's taking next to no time to fetch the data and render the component. But sometimes fetching the data isn't so quick and it might take a couple of seconds to load and show it in the browser. In those cases, we normally show some kind of loading message or a skeleton layout, which is basically a bunch of placeholder blocks meant to represent the content that's still loading. And it looks something like this where we see those dummy cards with small grey shapes inside them, which then get replaced by the actual content when it loads. So this is the finished effect that we're going for, and to make it, we'll be using the skeleton component from Shard Tien Yuan. I've already opened that page on the docs, and we can see another example of the skeleton right here. So they're fully customizable, you can make them how you want. And if we scroll down a bit, we can also see that it's really simple to use. We just apply some Tailwind classes, to the component, the skeleton component, to specify the width and height and whether it's rounded as well. So let's grab this CLI command to generate the skeleton component and try it out in our project. So the way we're gonna do this is by using a loading component which automatically gets shown in the browser whenever we're waiting for a page to be rendered. So let's quickly make a loading.tsx page inside the root of the app folder and then inside that page, I'm gonna quickly boilerplate a component. Now the page we're going to be waiting for is the only page we have. It's the home page where we fetch the recipe's data. And we're going to cause a data loading delay by using a promise, which only resolves after three seconds using a set timeout. And because we await this, we're not going to return any data for the page before this three seconds is up. Then we return the data and the page then gets rendered on the server and finally sent to the browser. So during that three seconds, Next.js is going to show this loading component in the browser in the place of the page component. And then it's inside this loading component that I want to render some kind of skeleton layout. Now, the way I'm going to approach this is by making a new skeleton card components inside the components folder. First of all, you don't have to place it here, by the way. You can place it wherever you want. I'm just placing it inside this components folder. So we're going to call this skeleton card.tsx. And then when we have this component, just quickly boilerplate the template. So inside this component, we'll be using the skeleton component from Shardcn UI in a minute to make a skeleton card layout. And then inside the loading page, I want to render about nine of those skeleton card components in a grid to match the grid of recipes we see when the data does load. So let me first make a div inside the loading page with a few different classes to make that kind of grid. And it's going to be pretty much the same as the grid in the home page. So we have a grid class. We also have a grid calls three class, and we also have a gap eight class. All right, so inside the div, we want to then output nine skeleton card components, right? Now to do that, we could just make up a random string, which is nine characters long, and then turn that into an array of nine characters using the split method, which I can then map through and return a little bit of template for each character in the array. So this is just cheap way really to <laughs> iterate through something nine times and it means that we'll be outputting nine bits of template and each time we do we're going to have access to that individual character from the string or the array now which I'm just going to call i so now we can output the skeleton card component for each of these iterations and that also needs to be imported and we can pass through as a key prop the character i because that's unique in the string cool so now we can get to work fleshing out the skeleton card component. So let's open that file back up. And inside here, I want to use the Shardcn skeleton component. So let's generate that first of all. And to do that, we can open up the terminal and paste in that CLI command that we copied before to generate the skeleton and then just press enter. So now that's done, let's close this. And we can see now that skeleton component right here. Only exports one thing, that's the only thing we need. So let's close this and now let's flesh out this skeleton card inside this file. So first of all, let me just import a few things. So let me paste these things at the top. We import the skeleton component from UI skeleton. That is the shard CN component that we're gonna use. Then also we import these things from the card component because our skeletons are gonna be inside cards. So it looks like the layout we already have. Now what I'm going to do in fact is go to the page.tsx file and I'm just going to grab all of this stuff right here. You see where we have a card? I'm going to grab all of that and copy it and then paste it in here. 
So all we're going to do is basically just change this a little bit and add in the skeleton component. But that way, we still have all of the same kind of components inside this skeleton card layout as we do for each recipe over here. So they're going to be very similar. So then, I don't need an avatar, so let's get rid of that. And then, in fact, we don't need this div right here. And we don't even need the card title. We'll just have the card header so we can position a couple of skeletons right here. And in fact, we don't need this key thing right here because we're not mapping through anything right now. Then down here, we don't have the recipe description. So let's get rid of that. We will keep card content. So we'll place some skeleton components here. So we'll have some here, some here, and then also some in the footer. So we can get rid of those. And in fact, we'll get rid of the class names from the footer. We won't need them. And we will keep the class names right here. And we will keep the class names right here. All right. So we just need to output some skeleton components now for the header, content, and footer. So then let's start with the header. We're going to do two skeletons right here, one for the avatar, so like a circle skeleton, and then one for the title. So let me do that. Skeleton, like so, self-closing. And then all we need to do is apply some class names to give this a width, a height, and whether or not this is rounded. So we'll say W-12, and then H-12 for the width and height. And they're the same because this is going to be a circle. Then we'll say rounded hyphen full to make it into that full circle. It should be class name. So that's the first skeleton. Let's do the second one. I'm going to duplicate that and then change the width and height. So we'll say the width for this one is, in fact, we don't need to specify the width. That can be the default. We'll just specify the height, which is six. And we'll also say flex grow instead of saying the width. And that means it's going to take up all the rest of the available space inside this container. All right, so this is going to be a width of 12, and then the rest of the space is for this title. All right, so inside the card content, let's do some more skeletons. So skeleton, if I can type, skeleton like so. And then we need some classes. So class name is equal to, and then all of these are going to be H-4. These are meant to be little paragraphs or little lines of a paragraph. We'll say flex hyphen grow, so it takes up the full space. And then we'll give each one a margin top of strength four. So I'm going to do this one twice. So it's like two full lines of text. And then the third one right here, I'm not going to say flex grow. I want it to take up half of the width of the container. So to do that, we'll say width hyphen one over two. So that's half. So it's like a paragraph, two full lines of text and then a half line of text. Finally, the footer, we'll do one. So we'll say skeleton like so apply a couple of classes. So class name is equal to, and then inside here we'll say H hyphen 10 and then W hyphen 28. And this is meant to look like a button. All right then. So let's save this now. Let's go to the loading page over here. Okay. Yeah. So we're importing this skeleton card right here, this component, we're importing it right here in the loading page. We're cycling through this long string or array of characters, I should say, and outputting a skeleton card for each one. So there's nine of these skeleton cards in total being output inside a grid, right, of three columns, much like the recipes themselves, a grid of three columns. So they're going to have the exact same layout. So this loading page is going to show while we wait for three seconds for the data to be returned right here. So let's Try this out now in a browser. All right then, so if I refresh this, hopefully we'll get that three second delay and see each one of these as a skeleton card instead, just for three seconds, which we do. We can see the circle and the title. If we refresh, we get the two full lines, the half line, and then the button as well at the bottom. So that's all looking pretty good. So there we go, my friends. That's how we can create a skeleton layout using the skeleton component.